everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches Show! Today I'm going to show you guys how to make this pretty little lace crocheted collar. You've seen me wear these a lot on the show because I have a lot of them. <laughs> I have them in different colors because I have a real love affair with lace collars. I love the feminine, old-fashioned, romantic feel that they have. They can really dress up an otherwise plain little outfit. And they're pretty cool with a lot of different wardrobe choices. Sometimes I just wear it as a necklace, sometimes I wear a necklace with it, like a little strand of beads, and sometimes I wear it over top of little cardigans or um, sweater sets to the office. So they're kind of neat for a lot of different situations. And if you're into costuming or subculture fashion like Lolita or goth or steampunk or Edwardian or Victorian sort of choices, then this is a wardrobe must-have. But enough chatter about fashion. Let's grab our hooks, grab our crochet thread, head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a lacy collar together. For our lacy little collar, we're going to be using crochet thread. This is crochet thread size 3, not to be confused with the regular yarn sizing. You want crochet thread size 3. This is 100% mercenized cotton. So you want Crochet thread, size 3 for this project. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, a little pearlized button about a centimeter in diameter, a needle and thread to sew it on with, and the hook we're using today is a 3.75 millimeter or an F5. And once you've got all that assembled, we can get started. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Now this collar is designed to sit somewhere around your collarbone, but I have three sizes for you. So if you have a 13 inch neck, you want to chain 82 to begin. If you're closer to 14 inches, you want to chain 88. And if you're closer to 15 inches, you want to chain 91. But remember, this does sit around your collarbone, so it's a little on the loose side to begin with. Okay, to recap, I'm going to talk about sizes small, medium, and large now. If you're making a small size, you want to have 82 chains, medium, 88 chains, and large, 91 chains. But the pattern is the same for all of us. So into the second chain from the hook, so skip over the first one, you're going to half double crochet, and you're going to half double crochet all the way back to the very beginning. So half double crochet into each stitch across. At the end of row one, so you've half double crocheted into every chain all the way across your foundation chain row. If you're making a small, you should have 81 stitches. If you're making a medium, 87. And if you're making a large, 90. Now we're going to chain three. Turn our work. This chain three counts as a double crochet. We're going to Skip the next stitch, and remember this one is already accounted for because this chain 3 counts as a double crochet. We're going to skip this stitch, and we're going to V-stitch into the next one. And that is a double crochet, chain 1, and double crochet back into the same stitch. So that is a V-stitch. So you chain three, this stitch is accounted for, you skip the next stitch, and you worked double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the same stitch. Skip two stitches, find the next one, and V-stitch into it. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And that is the pattern across for row two. You're going to skip two stitches, find the third, and V-stitch into it. You can work that all the way across, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row two. Once you get all the way to the end, working a V-stitch into every third stitch, you should have one, two, three stitches left. So you're going to skip two, and double crochet 
into the last stitch. So the chain three that began row two counts as a double crochet, crochet <laughs> and we're going to end with a double crochet. Now for those of you making a small, you should have 26 V stitches in total. For those of you making the medium, 28 V stitches and the large, 29 V stitches. And that's an easy way to count up. You just count your V stitches. All right, row three. Row three is really easy because we're going to repeat row two. We're going to chain three turn our work and you're going to work a v-stitch into the middle of every single v-stitch from the row previous. So after you've chained three, find the middle of that v-stitch and work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into it. And this one is easy to eyeball. You just look for the next v-stitch, find the middle and work a v-stitch into it. Work that all the way across and you should still have 26, 28, or 29 V-stitches depending on what size of collar you're making. We're at the end of row three. You've worked your last V-stitch into the top of the V-stitch from the row previous. Find the top of that chain three and double crochet into it. So at the end of row three, your stitch count will be the exact same stitch count that you had at the end of row two. So now you should have two rows of V-stitches. We're going to chain three, turn our work, and now we're going to work some shells. So into each V-stitch, so the middle of the V-stitch, you're going to work three double crochets. So the purpose of this pattern, a shell consists of three double crochets and you're going to work one into the middle of every single v-stitch all the way across. So if you had 26 v-stitches, you'll have 26 shells, 28 and 29 respectively. So three double crochet into the top, or the middle I should say, of every v-stitch all the way across. At the end of row four, you'll work your last shell or three double crochet into the middle of that V-stitch. Find the top of the chain three that you began that last row with and double crochet into it. All right, if you had 26 V-stitches, you should have 26 shells, 28 or 29 respectively. We're going to chain three. That counts as a double crochet. We flip our work over and we're going to repeat row four. So you're going to work a shell into the middle of every shell. So look for the middle stitch and work three double crochet into it. So you can still eyeball this, but if you need to count, you're looking for the second double crochet of each shell or the very middle of each shell. What you want is all of your V-stitches and shells to line up on top of each other. So skip over, find the next middle of a shell, so the second stitch in, and work three double crochets into it. So repeat, total repeat of row four. You'll have the same stitch count at the end of this row as you did at the end of the last one. We're at the end of row five. You should have worked a three double crochet shell into the middle of the one from the row previous. Find the top of that chain three and double crochet into it. We are now going to work a border row. So instead of turning our work and working backwards, we're going to chain one and turn our work so that we're looking at the raw edge or the short edge of our collar. We're now going to work about nine single crochet up the short edge of our collar. Aim for nine. If you end up with eight or ten, that's fine. Just try to remember that number because you want to work the same number down the other short side of our collar. So go ahead and work approximately nine single crochets up the short side of your collar. And I'll see you when we get to the top. We're going to put in a buttonhole. All 
I've worked nine single crochets into the short edge of my collar. I'm up at the top. I worked my ninth into the first chain of my foundation chain row. See, there's my short tail. Now we're going to make a buttonhole. We're going to chain two, and we're going to single crochet back into that same stitch. And that is our buttonhole. I know it's small, but you don't want it to be too big, otherwise it'll slip off your button when you're wearing it. So two little chains will do it, especially if your button is about a centimeter in diameter. Now you're going to single crochet across the underside of every single shell, or sorry, chain, <laughs> from the first row. So underside of every stitch, that's every single chain, all the way across. They're easily identifiable because the thread sort of crosses itself. I like to put my hook right underneath the cross of it. So just work your way across, single crocheting in every stitch, and I'll see you at the end of this row. Once you've single crocheted in the underside of every single foundation chain row stitch, you're going to work one more single crochet in the same edge stitch, so two in the last chain, basically. That counts as the first one down your other short side, so you want to work, in my case, eight more all the way down the edge, and then I will meet back up with you at the bottom corner. Once you've worked your single crochets down the other short side of your collar, you want to make sure that you have one, it can be an additional one, but you want one in the top of the chain three that began row five. So make sure there's a single crochet there. And now we're gonna work a scallop edge across the bottom. So that is three double crochet in the middle stitch of the shell from the previous row. And you're gonna ask me, Jada, if we're doing three double crochet in the same stitch, isn't that a shell? And I'm going to say, yes, it is in fact a shell. However, <laughs> it becomes a scallop when you anchor it with single crochets. So we have it anchored with a single crochet on the end, and in between every shell, you're going to single crochet. And that turns a shell into a scallop. Find the middle of the next shell, work three double crochet into it, and then find the space in between the shells and single crochet. There you go. A little scalloped edge all the way across the bottom. So you can repeat that, working three double crochet into the middle stitch of every shell from the previous row, and working a single crochet into the spaces between those shells. And that will turn our shells into scallops, and that will be our bottom border, and that will be our collar. I will see you at the end of this row. Once you've worked all the way across to the other end, working three double crochet into the middle of each shell and then single crocheting into the spaces in between, work your last set of three double crochets and then just slip stitch into the first single crochet of that little border row we made. And that will anchor the last scallop and that is the crochet work done. You can grab your scissors, snip your yarn, or in this case, your crochet thread, fasten off, grab your yarn needle, and take care to weave your yarn, or your thread, I should say, in, back and forth at least three times to make sure that it doesn't unravel. So we'll take a moment and do that now. Once you've got your tails woven in, you want to identify your buttonhole, and if you need to make it a little more obvious, you can stick your hook in it, wiggle it around a little bit. So there's your buttonhole. 
And now we're going to put our button on. So you want to match up your buttonhole with the top corner of the other side of your collar. Should be basically where you had the two double crochet into that top corner stitch. See the two, I should say single crochet, the two single crochet in that stitch there in the corner. That space is right about where I'm going to put my button. So right there. So you want to thread up your needle. I double threaded mine, so I knotted both ends together at the bottom. There we go. And I'm going to knot my thread on the underside, so the inside. This would be the part that's touching my neck. I'm going to create a simple knot. Before it goes all the way through, I'm going to bring my needle up through that double thread and that anchors it for me. Bring my needle through that little space and I'm going to sew on my button. I'm going to try and go through the edges of the stitches, so I'm not going to go around the outside, I'm going to go through the stitches. And I don't want to tie it on too tightly. So I'll come up through the little space and through the button. And I want a little bit of movement here, so I'm going to try not to pull my thread too tight. So go ahead, sew your button on, and then we'll weave in our little tails. Once you've sewn your button on, make sure you've brought your yarn around to the back. And we're going to thread our yarn back and forth underneath some of those single crochet, so the back side of some of those single crochets, just like we would if we were weaving in yarn or crochet thread. You're going to go back and forth, back and forth a couple times through those stitches. There we go. And then you can trim it right where you pull it out. So, careful not to cut anything else. There we go. And there's our button on. And that will fit nice and neatly through our buttonhole. And your buttonhole will stretch out a little bit, that's why you only want two chains. Now, finishing touches. See how your bottom edge wants to roll up a little bit? I highly recommend steam blocking it or wetting the entire collar and laying it flat to dry. So get it sort of damp, lay it out on a towel, um, and you want it to be flat. So you would lay it out completely flat and pin down your edges so that it dries flat. That way when it's resting around your collarbone, you're not going to have this little flip action happening. So I highly recommend lightly steam blocking or getting it damp and laying it flat and pinning it down to dry on a towel. And there you have it, one pretty little lace collar. It's perfect for dressing up a wardrobe or just wearing as a necklace if you want to look absolutely fabulous. It's totally old-fashioned and totally decadent and every wardrobe should have at least one. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed making this along with me today, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you are looking for a copy of this pattern, you'll find it in our Etsy shop. And we'll put a link to our Etsy shop in the description box down below. And thank you to everyone who has popped over recently and done some shopping. Until next time, we will see you soon on the Jade and Stitches show. Stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye!